What's up, freaks? Y'all probably heard that Detroit is one of the best markets for cash flow investors, right? So you might be one of those cats. We get a lot of out-of-state cats that are like, I don't care about appreciation. I just care about cash flow. That's why I'm buying in Detroit, right? Is that you? Is that you, Terry? Terry, I fucking know that's you. That's what you're fucking think. Terry, I see you looking at me with your fucking eye. Put your pants on, Terry. Wipe the Cheeto dust off your face and realize that I'm about to lay some gospel on you. Cash flow is not the only reason you should be buying properties in Detroit, okay? You actually make money off of buying Detroit rental properties in five ways, all right? Five ways you can make money investing in Detroit. And we are gonna go through all of them right now. <laughs> all right, y'all, welcome to the show. I'm James Wise, and y'all motherfuckers should be asking me questions, right? Because I answer them. I answer questions about Detroit as well as other cash flow markets, okay? That's what I do. I've sold over $200 million worth of real estate, and I help y'all make money. And today we're talking about making money in Detroit. We're going to be talking about the five ways you can make that money, right? I know a lot of you think that Detroit is just for cash flow. Like, you're like, hey, you don't get no appreciation in Detroit. I say BS. You actually do, okay? Plus, you get four other things, okay? And we're here to talk about it, okay? Special shout out, special thanks uh, to my partners, my friends, Logical Property Management in Detroit, okay? Um, any deal I do in Detroit, okay? If I'm doing deals, if I'm making money in five ways in Detroit, Michigan, Logical Property Management, y'all. Those are the people I'm doing the deals with. Those are my property managers. Those are my boots on the ground. Those are the people that you want to talk to if you're actually going to take what I'm about to give you today and put it into action. If you're ready to make money in five ways in Detroit, you're definitely going to need a boots-on-the-ground partner, and Logical Property Management is my partner. I think they should be your partner too, but hey, what do I know? I've only sold $200 million worth of real estate. Now, let's get into the deets, okay? Let's get into the details. They have sweet blogs about Detroit, so you should probably just check that out, right? Uh, they put nice little tidbits together for y'all. They're really... That's, that's like why I work with them too. So like there's a lot of synergy there, right? Like we do a lot of the scissoring because like, you know, the logical PM team and Drew, they, they, they have the same philosophy that I have that instead of just blatant sales pitches all the time, you got to teach, you know, provide valuable insight and information. And that's why they do all the blogs and the articles, all Detroit specific stuff, right? And let's just start with the obvious one, dude. Cash flow. I get it. It's Detroit, dude. Yeah. It's a cash flow market. Now, there are other ways to make money, obviously. That's what we're going over today. But the number one, the name of the game in Detroit, it's cash flow, right? It's one of the cheapest cities that there are, okay? One of the cheapest cities in the United States of America is Detroit, Michigan, right? So if you're looking to buy really, really cheap properties and get a bunch of cash flow, you're willing, trying to become like a Section 8 freaking emperor, Okay, Detroit's where it's at, dude. You could buy like one house in L.A. or you can buy like 73% of fucking Detroit for the same amount of money. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, obviously cash flow is baked into the cake. That's why you're coming to Detroit, right? But I don't want to talk about cash flow any longer because, guys, that's we get it. We know it. If Like that's why people are Googling like, Best cash flow markets, and then Detroit pops up. I get it. You know, it's it's the cash flow. But let's 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 think outside the box. Let's go a little deeper than just cash flow, y'all, because I think like y'all already know that, right? Can we talk about the other stuff though? Okay, the other stuff, and this is <laughs> this is a go on. I love this one. Appreciation, right? This goes right to what I said at the top. Like y'all thinking that like the Midwest and places like detroit won't appreciate no they do they do now i'll tell you this if you are an investor who's focused on cash flow what you want is cash flow and you're like you're trying to get it by getting a bunch of affordable properties detroit's like 
a place you want to focus, but there's going to be appreciation with that. Now, likewise, if you're a person who doesn't care about cash flow and you're only buying as a spec buyer because you want to make your money go up in value down the road, Detroit's not the best market, right? It's stupid to think it would be, okay? Like, you know, you take some place like, oh, I don't know, Florida, right? Florida's population trends are far better for the long term, as far as incoming, outgoing motherfuckers, right, than Detroit is. Like, that is obvious. Nobody's standing up here telling you guys Detroit's going to appreciate more than, like, a Sunbelt state. But if you're a cash flow investor focused on that cash flow, don't ignore the fact that there will be appreciation. And Detroit specifically has seen, like, a crazy amount of appreciation over the last 10 years because we're coming out of the Great Recession. And then Detroit itself was like, Really, 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 really bad. So you got a lot of neighborhoods that really like shot up and there's a lot of gentrification happening. Right. So you could specifically get into a very few uh, small select neighborhoods that are going to see a massive amount of appreciation. But in general, the entire market, just like most all markets in the United States of America, there are going to be there is going to be appreciation, guys. Like that's just how it works. Right. Like 25 years from now, the houses that you buy in Detroit Probably going to be worth a lot more money. That's that's why, like, you know, 90% of the people that become self-made millionaires in America, they do that through real estate investing. Like, you don't need James Wise on the show to tell you that buying real estate is smart. If you don't know it's smart, you're a dummy. Don't be a dummy. Amortization, okay? Amortization. I like this, all right? Or as I like to call it, principal pay down. This is like... Honestly, this is the biggest thing for, like, this is the biggest argument for buying real estate in general, right? Like, a lot of times when people ask me, they're like, yo, man, I I live in California. I want to invest. I want to invest in Detroit, man. Should I buy a house? And I, my first question, my, my answer, you would think my answer would be yes. No, it's not, my, it's, not my, it's not my first. No. Before that, before that, I say, hey. Do you own your own house, right? And if the answer is no, I say no. Don't buy a rental property. Buy your own house first, I say. Take care of home base first, right? Because of amortization, okay? Because of amortization, guys. Here's the deal. You have to live somewhere, right? We all know that, right? No matter who you are, what you're doing, you got to have a roof over your head, okay? And if you have a roof over your head, you're paying off a mortgage, right? Now, if you own that house, that mortgage could be your own. If you rent that house, that is your landlord's mortgage. You're making some fat motherfucker like me more rich when you could be making yourself rich. Why? Through amortization, right? Let's say you're renting a house, easy math, 1000 bucks a month, right? Say you uh, live there for 10 years, right? That's 12000 a year times 10 years. That's $120,000, you just spent 120 grand and poof, it's gone. 10 years later, you have not a fucking penny to show for it. Likewise, if that same amount of money was paid to your $1,000 a month mortgage, you have something to show for it. You have the principal pay down through the amortization on your loan. Now, here's the deal. This is very important, too. When you guys are investing in real estate, you should be paying attention to real estate over the long haul. If you think you're going to, like, buy a couple rental properties and then sell them in three years in Detroit and, like, come out of it making a bunch of money, you're not. Okay? The markets are not moving up that quickly. Okay? it's you got to be focused on the long haul, right? Mostly because principal pay down and how amortization schedules work. The majority of you are going to buy residential homes, okay, on 30-year loans. Loans amortized over 30 years. Now, here's the deal. Let's just keep using the easy number, $1,000 a month. Say you got that $1,000 a month mortgage. It's not like every single one of those payments is 500 as interest, 500 as principal. 500 goes to the bank, 500 goes in your pocket. That's not how it works on a 30-year amortized loan, y'all. The beginning of the loan, more specifically, the first seven years of said loan, are packed, packed with interest, okay? So, in my previous example, had you rented something, 1000 bucks a month, 12000 a year, 120000 okay, for that first 10 years, right? You got nothing to show for it. If you own something, right, of that 1000 you're getting something back, but... 
for that first seven years of that loan, a lot of it is interest, but that's why you got to ride it out because it starts going the other way after seven years and the majority starts becoming principal pay down, right? So like, let's say the first month of a 30 year mortgage and it's a thousand bucks, dude, it's like 970s interest, 30s principal. But the last payment of a 30 year mortgage, that's like flipped, right? Might be like 30 bucks interest, 970 principal. So like in the scenario where you're renting, thousand bucks you get nothing back in the scenario where you own right where you own it thousand bucks 970 goes right back to yourself now that's if you own your own home if you take that one step further and buy rental properties in detroit right all those rent payments right so say you collect three hundred thousand dollars in rent you get, you get to use that to pay off your own notes. And then once you get towards the end of your career there, that's all freaking profit, man. So that is a great way you do it. A lot of people, they'll run into situations with their rentals where they're like, I did my numbers and I didn't cash flow anything this year. I'm like, bullshit. You got a mortgage? They're like, yeah. I'm like, how much did you, uh, so you broke even on your rental, right? Yeah, I broke even. Okay. How much were your mortgage payments for the year? Well, I spent five grand on mortgage payments for that year. Okay, great. Let's look at that five grand. Oh, shit. Of that five grand, 4,000 of it was principal pay down. Did you take that 4,000 out of your own pocket? No. My tenants paid me the rent. Oh, so you just made four grand. You thought you made zero, but in reality... You made four grand, right? Compound that over a massive portfolio, guys. Amortization. That is one of the biggest things people do not pay attention to when they buy rental properties. You all just be paying attention to that little amount of cash flow, which is not really that important in the big picture of the game. The big picture of the game is principal pay down, right? Using the bank's money to get loans, to buy houses, and then using the tenant's money to pay off those houses. Say you bought four houses, all valued at a hundred grand. It only costs you a hundred grand to buy four houses valued at a hundred grand. You get four hundred thousand dollars of real estate for only a hundred grand. Okay, thirty years from now, the real estate's probably worth eight hundred. So now you have eight hundred thousand dollars worth of real estate that you bought for 100 grand, you made 700 grand plus all that cash flow in the middle. I mean, guys, it's a fucking no-brainer. You're literally quadrupling your money when you get a loan, right? Speaking of that, how about hedging against inflation, okay? You could take that same 100 grand that you're probably going to be able to turn into 800 grand over the course of 30 years and just leave it in the bank. You could do nothing with it, right? But, like, dude, how many of you talk to your grandpa and he's like, Oh, I went to the movies the other day, and the movie ticket, I don't, I don't even know. How much the fucking movie tickets cost, John? Like ten, 10 bucks? So they go to the movies now, and that's showing my age. I don't even go to the movies. I'm rich, y'all. I got a movie theater in my house, okay? It's, you got to buy rental properties. You could have a movie theater in your house and be fucking out of touch like me. But no, like you get grandpappy. He's telling you, like, ah, oh, movie theater tickets, they're 10 bucks. When I was your age, when I was 20 or whatever it is, when I was a kid, we'd go and see the 10 cent matinee, right? Some fucking bullshit like that, right? Everybody's got that old motherfucker telling them that story at Thanksgiving, okay? What that old motherfucker forgets to mention, right? Is yeah, yeah, that's right, bro. You're paying 10 bucks for a movie ticket today that you used to pay 10 cents for. But like, you ask your grandpappy, yo, what was like. What were you making an hour back then? And he's like, I was making a dollar twenty-seven an hour. You get it, right, guys? Like, it goes up. Inflation. This is very elementary stuff here, right? But like, you could leave your hundred grand in the bank for thirty years, and then thirty years later, you still got like a hundred grand because you're making like no interest. But your hundred grand doesn't buy you a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff, right? Because stuff costs more now. So maybe your hundred grand has a true value now of like fucking an adjusted for inflation value of like seventy thousand, right? So you kind of like lost thirty grand, as opposed to my previous example where you took that same hundred grand, you bought yourself four houses in Detroit that are now worth about eight hundred grand, and we're not even talking about any of the cash flow you got over the last three decades, which is the number one motherfucking reason y'all be buying houses in Detroit in the first place. See what I'm saying? Makes sense, okay? And then lastly, capitalizing on tax benefits, right? 
Death and taxes, y'all. Death and taxes. It's the only thing that is guaranteed in this world, right? When given the opportunity, the government does one and one thing only. They ram us in the ass! That's what they do, guys. They ram us in the fucking ass. You go to work, you make money, they tax the money. You take that money that they already taxed and you buy something with it. And then they tax that, okay? So you, they tax your already taxed money. Then you buy real estate, you buy a house that you live in and they tax that too, right? But us real estate investors, okay, we got our own little government rape whistle, right? That's being a real estate investor, they're still trying to ram us in the ass. Don't think they're not. That's like what they fucking do. They are fucking like Diddy on cognac after 2 a.m. at a party. There is a lot of fucking, you know, non-consensual ass ramming occurring in the taxation, government, citizenship, you know, relationship, okay? They're just trying to ass ram you, all right? But we can fight back a little bit. We got the little rapist We're like, no, Diddy, no, don't fucking come out here with your fucking big ass dick trying to ass ram me. No, see, we're fighting back, okay? And we can fight back. We can fight back because as real estate investors, we get to write off a lot of shit that other people don't get to write off, right? So like, for example, if you own a house and it's just your house, you just fucking live there and, you know, your furnace breaks okay well you make your money at work right and then they tax you on that money you make at work so now you've taken your after-tax money and then you have to spend 3500 bucks to fix a furnace right and then of course the government's going to charge you like a percentage to buy that furnace to pay the serviceman to fix your furnace right so you got double fucked right double ass fucked okay they charged you you had to use after-tax money and then you had to pay to fix the furnace and pay taxes on it, okay? Well, guess what? If you're a real estate investor, you don't get as fucked in the ass as bad, guys. Because now that you're a real estate investor, your furnace breaks. Oh, that's unfortunate. You have to pay 3500 bucks for the dude to fix it. And, of course, you got to pay sales tax on that. So they're still ramming you a little bit. But that $3,500, y'all... That is no longer after-tax money. That is now pre-tax money, okay? So let me explain how that works. Say you have a job, easy math, you make 100 k a year. In general, you're probably going to pay between forty-five dollars and $50,000 of that 100 k in taxes. Because, again, our little rape whistle... It only discourages the ass ramming. It does not eliminate ass ramming. There will still be a little bit of ass ramming in your life. But we're just trying to get it down a little bit, okay? So you got that 100 k You're paying 45 to 50 k in taxes. Everybody's doing that, right? But us real estate investors, we get to fight back a little bit. Because when we have to pay 3500 plus tax to fix our furnaces, that $3,500 is is now no longer something we had to use after-tax money to pay for. No, no, no. That is now a line-item expense for our actual business of owning rental properties, okay? So that's a loss, a loss of $3,500. So now your, pre, your pre-tax income of hundred k is no longer hundred k Now it's $96,500. Now the government gets to get their greedy fucking hands on their cut of your ninety six five, not your hundred k Pretty cool, right? Especially because now that your house has a working furnace, your business is worth more money than it was when your furnace did not work. Additionally, motherfuckers... Same scenario with the mortgage interest, right? That is an expense. Insurance, okay? Your legal and professional fees, right? It's Detroit! You're going to have to evict some motherfuckers, guys. That's the name of the game. Take a look at the Tennis from Hell show, right? Eventually, you're going to have to evict some motherfuckers. It's still Detroit, right? It's a tough neighborhood, okay? It's, it's tough. It's tough, right? But guess what? When you do, you get to use pre-tax money, right? And all that money you spent goes off your taxable income, right? So, hey, check it out. 
It's not just about cash flow, folks. You can actually make money by buying houses in Detroit several ways. Here is five, brought to you by me and my partners, my friends, my dudes, my homies at Logical Property Management. So if you guys want to learn more about real estate investing and all the cash flow markets in the USA, make sure you subscribe here to Holton Weiss TV. And if you want some specific insight or need assistance with your rental properties in Detroit, you need to sell them, you need to stabilize them, you need to turn them around, you need somebody to take your property that's not making you that cash flow that you come here for and turn it into cash flow, reach out to my folks over at Logical PM. I will put their info, a link to their site in the comments below or in the notes below. Let's go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.